What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right, welcome back. Week 11 here in uh, Sentinels franchise and we got a lot to cover here today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get right into it. So this intro is not too long and we can get into a big game against the last place Cowboys, which you don't say that too often in Madden. And real quick, guys, trying to get to 1,000 subscribers here. Once I hit 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. So please subscribe to the channel if you love Madden and or football content. So first order of business today, we got rookie Dwight Jackson out of UAB. We're going to reveal his dev trait. Now, he's only played 80 snaps, so he's definitely not going to get it, you know, uh, revealed organically. And he is the backup to Dudley Saxton, so he's starting to find, you know, a little bit more of an important role here on the team, especially since Dudley hasn't been playing great as of late. And maybe, I mean, I'm sure he's probably star, but maybe superstar, who knows? Wishful thinking for sure. But he looks to be pretty well-rounded. I mean, you know, he's a power back. And for, you know, being a power back, he's got okay speed at 89. Nothing crazy, but also 85 agility also for a power back. Not the worst thing in the world. And I feel like he was running pretty good in the last game that we played against the Vikings. So maybe he could end up being somebody. But we do have our 40 staff points here. So we are going to go ahead and use those to reveal my man's dev trait right now. Fingers crossed, man. Having a, another superstar uh, player on this team would be amazing. So let's go ahead and see. We've purchased it. His dev trait should be revealed. Moment of truth. Let's go check out Dwight. As I thought, I mean, it's star, you know, but that's okay, though. Two star running backs, Dudley Saxton and Dwight Jackson. Of course, we moved on from Brian Robinson, so he is no longer on this team. But that's, I mean, okay, I'm fine with it. I figured that that's what uh, was going to be. Figured that we wouldn't get superstar dev. But speaking of superstar dev, Emmanuel Forbes wins the NFC Defensive Player of the Week last week with three interceptions and a big touchdown. These Sentinels, man, we're just racking up the weekly awards left and right, defense, offense, you name it. I like this football club. I like this squad and got big, big aspirations to get to that Super Bowl this year. Rivalry game against the Cowboys looking to stay atop this division We've beaten the Cowboys before and also beaten them pretty handily. So we're facing a bitter rival in the Cowboys this week and limiting the impact of Micah Parsons must be top priority. Uh, we're definitely not talking trash. Praise. Let's challenge Micah Parsons by any means necessary. Like you said, limiting his impact has to be a top priority. And he's at the top of the list of players that we aren't going to allow to beat us this week. So. Coach Smalls, I sure hope you're right, buddy. We got to beat the Cowboys and hold Micah Parsons to two or fewer combined sacks and tackles for loss in this week's game. 11 from heaven. Always tough to stop that guy. So we are going to have to game plan for that this week for sure. Got to also set our focus players in the scouting here. And remember, we only have a third round pick, a sixth round pick, and a seventh round pick. I'm mostly looking at defense here. I talked about some of these prospects few episodes ago jerry pete looks really good but we would have to trade up to get him more than likely and i'm just probably not in the business of doing that i've been wheeling and dealing my draft picks and you know need to start getting some of those back for the next draft so i'm kind of looking at these three middle linebackers here they all look really good and i need to know which one i mean one of them will definitely be here in the third round they're all projected three to four so we got Justin Booth here, who is a six foot, 236 pound middle linebacker out of the U. He looks amazing with his athletics. Great to elite across, not across the board, but in a lot of different areas. And he is a field general type of player. Good man coverage could be good zone coverage and also good awareness. So Justin Booth, especially from the athletic standpoint, he looks really good. Now, Keith Alexander, I want to say this was the coverage guy. Uh, he's field general too, 6'2", 231 out of Notre Dame. Not as good of an athlete as Justin Booth, but his coverage skills, yeah, this is the guy. A zone coverage, B man coverage, already off to a great start. And he could potentially have some rushing moves in there as well. Not 100% sure, but Keith Alexander looks like a fine prospect. And then rounding things out here with the other middle linebacker, also three to four, Isaiah Tucker. He's a pass coverage guy out of Alabama. 
Pretty good athletics too, similar to the athletics of Justin Booth. And all three of these guys have good coverage skills, which I really, really am interested in because I need somebody to kind of man that middle of the field. We see it episode after episode. Guys just torching us in the middle of the field, um, especially when we come out in like those three, four sets. Got to have some guys out there that can do that. So we're going to go ahead and make all three of these middle linebackers, Justin Booth, Keith Alexander, and Isaiah Tucker, our focus players. And before I forget, man, we got to give my man James Smith-Williams the bag. He leads our team in sacks. He's going to be super cheap, too. And uh, he's just been playing at an all-time level. He's got 8.5 sacks on the season of forced fumble. And even last year, I mean, five and a half sacks, too. So he's been consistent. But he has, I mean merging into dominance i would say this year and we can get him for super super cheap he has a ton of interest in being here he's looking for a one year 3.59 million dollar deal i mean we should be able to i'll give him two years why not he'll be 30 but two years 7.6 no way he doesn't take that yeah james smith williams definitely earned his roster spot on the St. Louis Sentinels. Going on down to AT&T Stadium, the four and five Cowboys taking on these seven and three Sentinels. And I was issued another challenge in the comments by my man at Nick Green 5680 to get JJ Ford 400 plus yards, three plus touchdowns, two or less turnovers, and have two 100 yard receivers in this game. So I feel like we're gonna need an offense like that to take down the Cowboys. I don't care if they're four and five. It's the freaking Cowboys, man. They always play great in Madden. So strap in. Let's get ready for this one. If you guys are fired up for some more St. Louis Sentinels content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Remember, Jersey giveaway at 1,000 subscribers. Please help me get there. And without further ado, let's get down to Arlington, Texas and get ready for the game. Evan McPherson, who is now a Dallas Cowboy in this game, going to be kicking the ball off to... Jahan Dotson not going to return this because I don't typically like to do that. Doesn't ever seem to get me anywhere. But what will the Sentinels offense have in store today? We played very good against the Minnesota Vikings a couple uh, or last episode. And of course, J.J. Ford right now, the front runner for MVP in the league. Six interceptions for me. That is crazy. Usually by week 11, I am somewhere, say, 15-ish, <laughs> somewhere like that. But finally, finally playing good and not uh, really turning the ball over, which is awesome to see. We're going to start this thing out. Dudley Saxton with the lead block from our fullback, Michael Burton. Only picking up two. Got to find a way to get Dudley back to his typical Dudley ways. We haven't really been seeing that too much as of late. Not going to give up on my man for sure. He is still the running back number one on this team. But would love to see him back over 100 yards in a game. Second and eight now. We're going to go play action. Might have John Dotson on the deep shot, which I think we do. Let me see a juke. Ooh, couldn't quite get out of the way of Deron Bland. But still a 28-yard reception on J.J. Ford's first pass of the game. Trying to get towards that 400-plus to get our challenge completed today. No Jarius Powell, who is our uh, second or a second round pick left tackle out of USC. So Larry Jenkins, the two year man, going to be filling in for him. So let's see what type of impact that plays. There's Micah Parsons getting uh, behind Dudley Saxon there. Got to make sure that we don't allow him to have, what was it, two, two plus uh, sacks or TFLs, I think. Got So basically, he can have one game wrecking play. That is our goal for today. Second and eight, we're coming out shotgun with a levels concept. See who wants to get open here. And that is a pick from DeAndrez McLean, a rookie out of Pittsburgh. Dallas's fourth round pick. And it's speaking of pick, it's been a long time since we saw a pick from JJ Ford. That'll put him at seven. And uh, that was a weird animation, man. I don't know if you guys saw that, but like, Jahan Dotson was, he wasn't the most open, but he was open a little bit. And he just kind of like teleported behind uh, the safety there. So not sure what that was all about. Dak Prescott, nowhere near the yardage of J.J. Ford, but he only has five interceptions. So he is also playing pretty clean football as well. And uh, the question is, what type of Dallas Cowboys team are we going to see today? Also, no Jonathan Allen. That's important to note. 
And Tony Pollard, who's their back, of course, he's now with Tennessee in real life. Stopped there by Tony Knight for only a gain of two. Good way for the defense to start. Got a little man coverage working here. Dak coming out of the shotgun. And, oh, Kendall Fuller. It's kind of got owned there by Michael Gallup, who's, of course, not going to be with the Cowboys in real life. They did not re-sign him, so I believe he's just a free agent. Heard some talks of maybe Pittsburgh might be a good destination for Gallup, but I don't know. I think Gallup's, I mean, in the twilight or going towards the twilight of his career, I would say. So not sure if anybody is going to pick him up. We had some pressure there on Prescott. He just decided to throw the ball out of bounds, which was probably... A good decision. We're going to blitz up Cam Curl here, but um, having him there more for run support. Wow. Dak putting on the moves. Stiff arming a man. Okay, Dak. 20 yards on the rush. He can certainly do that. So going to have to be cognizant of the quarterback keepers in this one. Let's press up with our guys here. Going to send a little bit of pressure. Got to watch Pollard there to Dak's left. It's Smith Williams. Oh, and it's picked right back by Forbes. Oh, man, we need a one block on CeeDee Lamb. So these quarterbacks that aren't really throwing interceptions, J.J. Ford only had six coming into today's game. Dak only had five. Both have a pick on their opening drive. Emmanuel Forbes might be leading the team now. He He's neck and neck with Kendall Fuller. That much is for sure. Get a quick look at this Dallas defense. Demarcus Lawrence still here. He's a longtime vet. And, of course, Micah Parsons. No introduction needed. Mozzie Smith and Bobby Brown. Mozzie Smith uh, looked for him to be a pretty impactful player in real life. We got Eric Rush here, the two-year pro. He was the Cowboys' third pick back in 2024. Auto-generated, of course. DeMarvian Overshown. No Leighton Vander Esch. He's injured. Good for Madden. And he's calling it quits in real life, too, because of his neck troubles. So that's unfortunate for him. Caleb Von Chasen, former first-round pick. Trayvon Diggs is the cornerback number one. DeAndres McLean, who just got that pick on us. And then Donovan Wilson. So always a formidable offense when you play the Cowboys, no doubt about it. And it's got to bounce back from that first drive. Uh, I'm going to send Terry straight up the middle. And also may have, yep, we're going to try him. Terry, he gets it. Break one tackle, one man to beat. Could not get past Donovan Wilson or else that would have been a house call for the St. Louis Savior, but a great, great read nonetheless. I like draw here with Dudley. This will probably be four down territory if we don't get it, but let's just hopefully pick it up and not have to worry about it. There's some good lanes for Saxton. Those draw plays usually work pretty well. Dudley is typically able to exploit the coverages that come out to defend those. So good to see my man get some positive yards here. Gonna come out gun and maybe look to hit Terry on this corner shot. We gotta also try to get two 100 yard receivers today. Terry, prime candidate at number one. See if we can get him on the corner. We do! Terry starting out great now. He's already close to 100. He gets this thing all the way down to the 14. JJ now has his X Factor activated as well. So hopefully we can see those dots flying through the field. Gonna roll out here on play action. And just look for an open target. Nobody's really there. Check it down to Dudley. <laughs> Tried to just do like a little floater, you know, and uh, did not work very well, unfortunately. Already in field goal range, surely. So just no turnovers and we should be good. Got to watch this pass rush. Curtis, I need you to fight forward. Oh, he's going to be stopped inches. Mere inches short. And what do you do here? We'll see if the coach says go for it. I think we have to. Coach does say go for it as well. Something inside zone would be preferable. Ah, coach really isn't calling anything that I necessarily like. Um, so we're just going to go good old-fashioned single back smash. Surely Dudley can pick up one yard, right? That's all we need. One yard. Come on, Dudley. It's your time to shine, brother. He should have it and actually has a touchdown as well. So good run from Dudley. Capping off that drive with a touchdown. Didn't even get to see his celebration, which I'm sure it would have been absolute cheeks anyways, as most of the Madden celebrations are. But going up 7-0, gotta had to shake that interception off. We did so, and we'll see what the Cowboys have in store for us for their second drive of the game. It's going to be interesting to see Pollard in a Titans uniform. I like Pollard. Uh, thought he was going to be much better in Dallas when he took over for Zeke. He 
played good, don't get me wrong, but I don't think he really took that next level that uh, Mike McCarthy and the boys were hoping for. We got a wide open Michael Gallup, and he shrugs the tackle off, and Tony Pollard actually gets injured. So their backup is Deuce Vaughn, five foot six guy. And then they also got a six round auto generated guy, uh, George or Chris Swain out of Connecticut. Deuce Vaughn is a, a little tyke. I mean, he's five. I'm five, six, so I can't talk, but I'm also not in the NFL, but definitely a very speedy, speedy guy for sure. And that is going to be Gallup again. Haven't seen CD Lamb, Brandon Cooks. It's been so far the Michael Gallup show. So now the Cowboys are threatening to score and tie this up. Don't want them to do that, obviously, but I mean, you kind of got to figure they will here. I'll tell you what, though. We are going to go man coverage. Deuce Vaughn is, in fact, in there to Prescott's left. It was just uh, we came out in our nickel, didn't have enough guys there in the middle, and Deuce Vaughn is able to tie this thing up. Terry's getting pressed here. I'm going to send him. He's going to be my first read, but if that safety doesn't go anywhere i'm probably gonna look for maybe a check down to george oh but he did and this could be it this could be it you don't press terry i don't care if you're deron bland i don't care who you are you don't press terry he eats that up for breakfast he eats press for breakfast pressos with a little bit of milk in there that's what terry eats for breakfast and it's like whenever i see that i'm looking to see what the free safety does if I even see him take a few trots inside, that's my first read. And typically with Terry, it works. And one play, 75 yards. J.J. Ford getting closer to that challenge. And I don't know if this is going to be a shootout. I wasn't necessarily ready for that. But it kind of has the makings of one. Now, I got pressure uh, blitz coming in through the A-gaps here. So I am going to back up. Dante Fowler and watch this side of the field. Dak is sacked by Justin Hayward. Two-year man out of Miami. And that will take us to the end of the first. All right, 14-7. Look at those passing yards, man. J.J. Ford should be able to reach his 400 with no problem. But got to make sure we don't throw any picks. I believe the challenge is two or less, I want to say. But don't even want to have to worry about that because hopefully... If we don't get any, we don't get any. And, oh, my God, Dante Fowler is playing coverage on Michael Gallup. That's not going to work. Had to have Hayward go out there, and Dak is going to be sacked again. Chase Young, good to, good to call his name. Good to call his name. We haven't really been calling it too much in this season. He's been uh, obviously a force for us in the past, but I haven't called his name too much in this season. So what does Dak do here? He's got you guys. <laughs> got to be kidding me a wide open cd lamb and he's just gonna get exactly what he needed how do you let that happen i will never know he needed 29 he got 30 that's a heartbreaker oh man that was a chance to really assert our dominance in this one and we may have just let it go by the wayside justin hayward i want him to get in the backfield again tony pollard's back so it must not have been a very serious injury for tony and he picks up seven on his first carry since being injured. All right, time to guest pass and shade inside here. Watching Pollard, though, wouldn't be surprised if it's an inside zone. It's a play fake. But Dak was going towards Schoonmaker there, but was inaccurate as he is around 60% completion. Very interesting. I am going to send pressure here and expecting a run to Pollard. So I am going to use their control on Cam Curl, but got to watch out for the play action deep shot. It's not even going to be just Gallup, who's got about 14 receptions in this one. Five. Oh. Okay. Seems like 14. I'm going to have James Smith Williams. Let's get some bull rushes, brother. Can you get in the backfield? I mean, he's getting close. And that could be all. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Dak Prescott, a throw out of the sack. If that's me, that's picked 12 times out of 10. Those throw out of sacks are always so dangerous. Somebody got pressure there on Dak. Who was that? That was, looks like Glenn May, rookie, right? Out of Washington, yep. And I mean, that was just a wounded duck. Fell right into the arms of CeeDee Lamb. Where's CD? I don't care. I don't want to see it again anyways. It was a good play. But yeah, if that's me, it's pick City typically every single time. 
The Cowboys are putting together another staunch drive here, so got to be careful. Fowler is going to play a little bit of coverage, and that is going to be is that Gallup again. My God. Somebody get the ball out of this man's hand, please. Gonna audible to the zone here. Watching the play fake. Nope, not gonna be. It's a second rushing touchdown for Dallas. First for Pollard. 14-14, pending the extra points. So Cowboys aren't gonna make it easy today. They usually don't. I can recall one game, uh, I think it was last season. Not this season, I think it was last season. We blew him out, held him to only seven points on the scoreboard. That ain't going to be the case today, and Jahan Dotson's also going to return this thing, so always scary. I am ass crack at kick returns. I don't know why. I try. There's one receiver over 100 yards, and got to try to get two. So will that be Curtis Samuel? Bart Burns played very well uh, last week. We have not looked to target him yet, so maybe he could be a target. But right now, the main focus of this one is just hopefully scoring. And Terry could be in for a career game. Trying to toe tap the sideline. Bart Burns looking a little hurt there. Come on, Bart. Shake it off. You're, oh, he's going out. He got hurt last week, too, and came back. So got to make sure to get that man some good medical attention. Let's try outside run with Jackson here. And I'm also going to ID up Parsons as the mic. Hopefully the blockers can kind of pull in his direction, which they did momentarily. Nice juke, too, from Jackson. Okay. Uh, Jackson making a pretty good case to get some more snaps. All right, look, we're audibling this. I came out pistol, but Curtis Samuel is going to be open probably on a quick step drop. Yep, there we go. Play recognition. You got to have it. I mean, I, I knew, like, two steps, sling. That was going to be it. And Bart Burns... Okay, he'll come back. That is good to see. Don't want to lose him because Bart, he is a key, key part of our recent success that we've been seeing here with the sense. Now, Saxton, come on, man. Let me get some good blocks, please. There we go. Dudley with some nice vision. He's pushed back a little bit, picking up four. I wish that Terry was getting pressed over there on the left side. He is not, so probably not going to be looking his way. There's Logan Thomas. He fumbled it. Oh, Logan, come on, man. That's clean, too. That's clean. Bobby Brown picks it up. But he got bumped and kind of stumbled. No chance of a booth review. Oh, okay. I could be wrong. Yeah, that one actually, I think that knee's coming, or that knee was down. That one should be coming back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you get a booth review on a fumble in Madden, it is review. always, always going to be overturned. Like, I've never seen it not overturned before. So unless I'm crazy, yeah, okay, good job. Sentinels do keep possession. Let's go draw to Dudley again. I'm sure those linebackers are going to drop back, and they do, and Dudley could be in. That's another thing. You know, you start to, once you play this for long enough and subject yourself to the misery that I've, sub I've subjected myself to playing this game, you start to see things. Like, like I said, the booth reviews are always overturned. When the defenders come out, linebackers in the A-gaps, they pretty much always drop back. Now, George could be open on this RPO. I don't like it. Dudley needs you to fight forward. And look at the power from 5'8", Saxton. He says, Dwight Jackson's a power back? So am I. He's not. But he ran with force on that one. And back and forth affair seesaw game here in Arlington. And you know what? I am here for it. But got to be careful because the Cowboys do get the ball back after halftime. See if this will be a run to Pollard here out of the weak formation. They got a fullback in, so more than likely. Nope, it's a play fake. Dax got targets open, and it's CD. Yeah, looking like it's going to be a shootout, ladies and gents, which definitely exciting for the viewer. Uh, Kind of stressful for the player, but I'm all about giving you guys good content. So, hey, yeah, whatever works. If the shootout's more exciting, I'm glad it's a shootout. Just want to make sure that we come away with the W. Yeah. And there's Pollard out of the backfield on the Texas route. Thing is, though, if they score quick, like, we're going to definitely have to put a drive together. Because, again, like I said, they get the ball after halftime. So if they score here, still will be a lot of clock. Maybe we force a turnover or a pick or something like that. That would be nice. Don't necessarily see it happening. Good pressure again from Chase Young. 
forced an errant throw from Prescott. It's a big one here, big one indeed. We're going a nickel blitz on a Wednesday afternoon, which it is Wednesday. Prescott, where's he going to go? He's scrambling and going to go down for a sack. Justin Hayward, one and a half sacks now. We got three sacks to Dallas' is zero. And you know what? Limiting them to a field goal and still having over a minute left and having all three of our timeouts. And with Dallas getting the ball back, we got a chance to put together one final drive before going into the locker room. Going to definitely have to do it for me to feel confident. You guys smell that? PA Cross. Smells like PA Cross, single back, X bunch, nasty in the morning. I didn't call this last game, so y'all should be proud of me. But perfect time to use it here. Curtis should be able to get open, and he is. And going to get out of bounds, too. No. That's okay, though. Clock, really not too much of a factor. Don't even think, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and call a timeout, actually. Yeah, I did not call that at all last game because I was also issued a challenge not to do that. And if you guys watch this channel, you know all about that play. I think screen pass to Jackson seems like the right call here because, again, we got uh, some time. And actually, Jackson might get out of bounds, and he does. Way to get out of bounds. Ford also at 271. So that challenge could be well within reach, and I am going to go draw play here. Jackson will remain in, in the game. But 51 seconds, still two timeouts. Last thing we want to do is give Dallas a chance to do anything, and Dwight Jackson gets injured. Nice. 47 seconds left, already in field goal range. Yes, I'm going to try to score. But just main thing is don't want to do anything dumb, and that was almost something dumb. So I'm probably going to play, you know, a little conservative, and Dwight Jackson's not even going to return. I can't even remember who Stevens is. He's somebody I signed off of free agency to fill a, uh, you know, position need. So that sucks. We just revealed uh, Dwight Jackson's dev trait, and he goes out. So third and six, again, field goal range. I'm fine with that if that's what ends up happening. But Dudley catches it. We're going to spike the ball here. Want to save that last time out. Got to have good clock management. Coach uh, must want me to call Y seam. What do you guys think? All right, I'm fine with it. Not really a huge fan of this play, but I'll tell you what. I kind of like Dudley. They got him on block and release, sure. Why not? We'll keep that. But uh, McLaurin may be my primary read. Nope, just going to give it to Dudley. He's got a lot of speed. Third and eight. Got to be careful here. This is... Pretty much got to be an end zone shot. Uh, and if it's not there, you know, just be comfortable throwing it away, I guess. Because we got to at least salvage a field goal. Now, M McLaurin could be open. Got to look for him quickly, though. And uh, nope, just going to throw it away. They're going to give me grounding, too. That sucks. It's all right, though. You know, going up 24-17. Uh, assuming I can make this kick a, a one touchdown lead. Not the worst thing in the world. So let's see if Sly can drill it. That one should be true. And I would say overall a good half of football. Got to finish off some drives. You know, wipe that interception out of our memory. But all things considered, I think we're playing the Cowboys pretty well. Yeah, good half of football, I would say. Definitely got to tighten a few things up. But the passing yards, I mean, even Dak and the Cowboys, like both teams are just lighting it up through the air and really not getting too much done on the ground here and uh going out of the locker room i think what did i do i'll we'll keep it at throw it deep i mean ford's got a perfect quarterback rating in that department and i may defend the short pass our game plan prior to this game seemed to work out pretty well so if it ain't broke don't fix it gonna go ahead and stick with that and uh yeah man just it's the cowboys so best believe i got about three containers of petroleum jelly here because the cowboys can turn it on at any given moment see how dallas will kick off their opening drive of the second half i would really love oh my god schoonmaker nobody on him gotta put a body on him he's there tight end number one if you can believe that so always 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 gotta have eyes on him tight ends do seem to uh carve us up at times here in Sentinels franchise, maybe Justin Hayward with some penetration in the backfield. Got to be careful. Don't want to let Pollard get going. 
Quan Martin, he had about one man to beat. Luckily, he was in good position, or that could have been disastrous. And this nickel mid blitz has been working pretty well, and uh, I've been usering on a safety, so we'll see if we can get some penetration in the backfield. Again, it's going to be Schoonmaker. Catches it, but only for a gain of four. And he also gets injured for his troubles as well. So we are seeing some injuries kind of start to pile up in this one. Let's uh, guess pass here. Shade underneath. That seems like a good idea. And it's going to be wide open. CD Lamb. That one could be six. It's not going to be. But these quarterbacks having a good old fashioned duel here in this one. Got to watch the got to watch the edge here. With Pollard, I can see this being an outside run. It's going to actually be a play fake. What the fuck is this? Give me that pit. Give me them cookies. Oh, man, we just got owned there. We just got owned by Peyton Hendershot. Wow. Of all people, the four-year pro from Indiana. That drive, uh, very ominous. Don't know if that's going to be what the Cowboys are going to load. They're booth reviewing it, actually. Thought it was a good catch. We'll have to take a better look at it here and see. Well... They're not going to let me. They're going to let me see the turf. Uh, yeah, great. Okay. Doesn't matter because the touchdown does stand. So we got some work to do, boys. We got to uh, continue this uh, aerial attack that Ford has seemed to perfect here in his second year out of Fresno State. Because one wrong move, give the momentum back to Dallas. Again, I, I know I say it. Probably sound like a broken record, but... It's the Cowboys, so Jahan Dotson, don't fumble and make me upset with you, please. I would be very upset. I'm gonna start this drive here from the 23. Show me some press on Terry. They're pressing Terry again. So, I mean, look, again, if that safety drops down, which he did again, and this could be Press City, when are you gonna learn from your mistakes? Terry McLaurin. Look, we might not get two 100 yard receivers, but what if I get. A 200-yard receiver, which Terry is definitely well over 200 yards here. I think that was the same play call, too, that he cooked uh, Deron Bland on earlier. And, I mean, if you're going to press, if you're going to insist on pressing, first of all, you're dumb. But you got to have safety help. You cannot have that safety come down to play the run. It's not going to end well for you. See if it's Pollard again here. Wouldn't be surprised if it is. It's going to be an outside run this time. And look, I mean, those jukes, they're deadly. Tony Knight over pursued. I had the sprint button held down there. Glenn May, our defensive tackle, was there to ultimately make the stop. And I think we're uh, going to send a little bit of heat here. Might cancel it, though. Uh, nope, it's Pollard again. Got some bodies over there. That one could have been dangerous. But Cam Curl was able to get the stop. And now a big, big third and four upcoming. I think it has to be pressure, but I'm also going to use her on Quan Martin because I could easily see this being a run to Pollard as well. They're changing the play. It's not going to be a run to Pollard. It's going to be CeeDee Lamb. First, it was Michael Gallup in the first quarter. CeeDee Lamb now at a buck 36. Cowboys are driving. All right, Sense, come on. I need you to wake up and uh, smell the run game, please, or the pass game, either or. Cam uh, or Chase Young there, limiting Pollard to a gain of five. We're going to send these blitzers again, linebackers through the A-gap here, and it is not going to be Pollard. It's a play fake, and Chase Young, second sack, and thank God, because I was usering on Quan Martin, or uh, I think it was Quan Martin, Anyways, Luke Schoonmaker or one of the tight ends was getting just butt naked open out there. So, uh, yeah, thankfully, thankfully we got the pressure on Dak or that one could have been ugly. Let's have Fowler come out here, play a little coverage. And why are these receivers getting so open? My God, man, Prescott going to complete the challenge for me that J.J. Ford's supposed to have. I don't know why they're getting so open, but they are. But I can tell you what, I don't like it. And I don't like this situation one bit. It's going to be Pollard. He's going to score. No, he's not. Actually, Tony Knight was there to stop him. Got to go pressure here right up the middle. And it's going to have to be uh, somebody getting there quick. It's Pollard. He dives. Third rushing touchdown now for the Cowboys. And this thing is just back and forth, back and forth. And I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Our defense has been playing good as of late. A lot of praise to go around the board. They're regressing in this one. 
31 points. I mean, but so is the Cowboys. But let's be fair. St. Louis Sentinels, we always put up points. Week in and week out, doesn't matter. But they got 31, and we still got a quarter and about a quarter left. But look at Terry, 236 yards and two touchdowns. Killing it. I want Dudley on the screen. We do got Micah Parsons over there, so that's never a good thing. And if I could just get a block... Not going to get it on DeMarvian Overshone. And this is a big third down. Yeah, definitely, uh, we're not in range here. We're not in range at all. So this would definitely be a punt situation. And I don't want to punt. I don't want to punt. It's the last thing I want to do. Because these Cowboys are playing rather possessed right now. And also, Micah Parsons over there kind of scares me as well um bart oh look at bart oh my god with the most amazing acrobatic catch and this guy just can't stay healthy there is no way a that i thought he was gonna catch that and b if he did catch it no way that he would have stayed in bounds but like that might if we go on to win this thing i mean look at that he's tackled he catches it first of all Heck of a catch and he's able to wrap around the defender do a complete 180 did get hurt doing it but if we go on to win this game somehow i i hope we do but you know i don't know that could end up being the play of the game like legitimately that could legitimately be the play of the game so saxton can you get it going brother i believe in you but i don't believe in the blocking Dudley close to the half century mark, and we're going to go ahead and let this thing tick down to the end of the third. All right, let's see if we can cook here, man. Let's see if we can cook. We're coming out play fake. Going to need some blockers. There's Samuel. He might be at 100 yards now. We may have had we may have that checked off of the good old checkbox for our challenge. And uh, he, Bart Burns, not going to come back, man. Let's see where everybody is at really quick here. So Ford... Over 500, over, he would need, what was it, was it two plus touchdowns, four plus touchdowns, I can't remember, three plus, I just looked it up, okay, three plus, and do we have two 100 uh, yard receivers, we have, we do, we do, so if JJ Ford gets one more touchdown and does not throw two more interceptions, which God help my soul, I hope he doesn't do that, that will be challenge completed, but right now, more important thing is just scoring here and reclaiming the lead. So let's see if we can do just that. We have a tight end, Cole Turner. Oh my God, stepping in because Bart Burns is injured. I don't think he has a single pass all game. He's our four year pro out of Nevada. Rarely sees the field in any capacity other than a blocker. And I think, you know, that may be his first catch of the they entire season and if that's the case boy was it a big one now so far challenge for jj ford is complete as long as we don't throw two more picks please don't let that happen boy i'll tell you what ever since the both of these qbs threw a pick they haven't looked back they have not i mean jj ford and dak like they've made virtually no mistakes since throwing those two interceptions would really really love to see a mistake from Prescott here. They got a fullback in, so yes, it's probably going to be a run to Pollard. Tony Knight's there, but couldn't wrap him up. Dante Fowler doing the janitorial work on the cleanup tackle. See what Dak does here out of single back from the 31-yard line. It's going to be Pollard, and Chase Young is there to meet him, but Pollard does uh, push the tackle forward, ends up picking it up. He's now over 80 yards, and actually got to kind of watch a run up the gut here for Pollard. That could be disastrous if that's what ends up happening but to end around to michael gallup and justin hayward who's playing great he's got a couple sacks he's got a couple tfls now he is really really playing good in this one he was there to shut that thing down and i mean pressure here just seems like the right idea although i'm probably gonna have chase young drop back and of course it's a run to pollard it could have been anything besides that if that was a pass I feel like we would have got to Dak or shut it down. I mean, I almost feel like we're going to have to kind of, you know, sell for the run. Like, going to use her on a safety or something like that. 
and kind of assume that it'll be a run. And when I do that, of course, it's a play fake. And C.D. Lamb able to moss Tony Hoover. Tony Hoover, I'm just going to go out and say it. He's been a bust for us. He has been a bust for us. If you watch the offseason, we had to do so much wheeling and dealing to, uh, to move up and trade with Green Bay to get him. And he just, he gets cooked. He gets cooked. He may have like a pass deflection or two here or there on the season, but aside from that, he gets cooked. There's no not, no nice way to say it. That's what happens to Tony Hoover. So will he get cooked again? Emmanuel Forbes just got cooked. I was usering on him and was way out of position. It's a fun slash stressful game. Don't know what to expect. CeeDee Lamb and McLaurin battling, going back and forth. They're both uh, up there in terms of yardage. And uh, Pollard getting a little gas back there, too. So might have to watch him if you're Prescott. Dak going to take off. Just throw it uh, out of bounds there to bring up second and goal from the seven. Got to watch CeeDee Lamb over here. I am going to probably drop back Chase Young in coverage. Not going to matter. Perfect pass to Jake Ferguson. Checkmate. Checkmate. Every time we've scored, Dallas has responded. Don't think they've they've never had the lead in this one, but they've always been able to tie it up whenever we took the lead. So, you know, yeah, I got a score here. I would I would take a long methodical drive. That would be great. But the way this game's going, if I score super quick, got to assume that Dallas is going to score super quick too. Maybe there would be a chance for us to possess the ball last. I need my man Dudley to get something going. So if we could get some blocks, that would be great. Good enough, I guess. I mean, Dudley. Oh, Dudley's still going, but Cole Turner got in my way. And now Terry's hurt. Now Terry's hurt. Oh, man. Wrong time to get hurt, brother. Wrong time to get hurt. Feel really good about draw play here. We've been able to pick this up on a couple third and whatever situations, but that time... Nope, they're starting to clue in, and yeah, that's no good. Uh, now Terry not going to come back. Believe the first punt of the day from Tress Way comes at a very bad time because we haven't shown any even signs of being able to stop this Dallas. Uh, oh, God, not a kick return touchdown, please. Yeah, we haven't shown any signs of being able to slow this offense down since the first quarter. And now they're going to start even in plus territory. We may be dropping to 7-4 uh, on the season. I mean, I hope not. Look, I'm going to give it the old college try. But it's just like every signs are all pointing unless Emmanuel Forbes can come up with his second interception. He just had three last week. No way he's not leading the team. And wow. Wow, wow. Emmanuel Forbes came to save the day. Now, we just cannot. We, we, we got to gotta score a touchdown here. Don't even want a field goal. It's, it's touchdown pretty much or bust. Like, sure, I'll take a field goal if that's what ends up happening. But this is pretty much got to be a touchdown. So let's see if we can do that. Curtis getting open. He's over 100 yards. Look, Ford might hit 500 in this game. With only three incompletions, no way he doesn't win MVP. And if there was ever a time where I would need Dudley to pick it up, that time is now. Nice lead block from Michael Burton. Thank you so much. Two-minute warning is looming here. Second and eight, we may be in field goal range, but it wouldn't be a confident one. If George can push the pile forward, he's not going to be able to. So third and two. Gonna let it tick down to the two minute warning. Let's see what the coach calls for me here. See what they got dialed up. They're saying, they're saying run, but I don't really like the ones that they're necessarily calling. I'm going screen pass. I'm going away from uh, coach suggestions. I don't care. I just feel like that's what we have to do. I think a Dudley screen should get this done. If not, we kick the field goal. But uh, let's just. Let's just pick this up, guys. Come on. I believe in you, Sentinels. Give me some blocks. For Dudley, he pushes the pile. How's about that? Now we are going to let this thing tick down as long as humanly possible. Still want to get a touchdown, not a field goal. But got to take some of this time off the clock. Come on, Dudley. Take us to the promised land, brother. All right. Nobody wanted to pick up Matthew Judon. 
who has now worked his way onto this Cowboys roster. Go draw play again here to Saxton. Need a hole. It's there. Dudley with some burst. They're going to say third and in inches. I don't know about that. He looked to be pretty close. But if we pick this up, that's more or less ball game. I mean, it's it's more, more or less ball game if we pick this up. So um, let's please do that. Someone needs to block uh, the linebacker there off of the edge. Dudley, I cut back the wrong way. But it didn't matter. First order of business, coaching uh, adjustments, ball carrier, conservative. Hit him with a little single back wham. Bring out the wambulance. Nice block. Dudley may be in. Ball is at the one yard line. And I mean, we. I just, I just could easily see myself like missing a field goal or something like that. We're going to take this down to 10 seconds and run one more play. Do not fumble the ball, Dudley. I am begging you. This is easy six. Boom. Maybe could have taken a few more seconds off the clock, but the only thing the Cowboys are going to be able to do is a Hail Mary shot. And man, oh man, this was a fun, fun, exciting game. Cowboys and Sentinels never disappoint. 45-38 should be the final score of the game. All Prescott can do is throw up a prayer here and just no P.I., guys. No P.I. Please no P.I. Breakup, that is ball game. Wow. See? Playoff bound, winning football teams. These are the kind of games that you win. You win the close games. You win the offensive shootouts. You do just enough to secure the smallest of leads. And we are going to win by seven. Could be the it could be the game of the year, man. And taking a look at these stats, oh my God, talk about storylines. So J.J. Ford, challenge come freaking pleaded. 474 yards through the air, 89% completion. Ford is a cheat code. Did have that one pick, but three touchdowns. And even Prescott, I mean, over 800 yards between these two quarterbacks. So hats off to both of them. And both running backs, 90-plus yards. So Dudley flirting with that 100-yard game. Hasn't gotten it in a while, but three touchdowns, that could be a breakout performance. And then the receivers, Terry, 236 and two touchdowns, yes, but he's injured, so we'll have to see for how long. CeeDee Lamb did great as well, and then the backups, Curtis Samuel and Michael Gallup, also performed very, very good as well. Justin Hayward was all over the field. Chase Young with two sacks. Hayward with 1.5. Glenn May with half a sack as well. And then Emmanuel Forbes continues to assert his dominance in that secondary role with two picks. That's five in the last two games. And Justin Hayward, well-deserved upgrade. Uh, played a very, very good game there. What does Hayward really need? I mean, he's a middle linebacker, but he's more of a, like a pass coverage guy. I, mean, I guess we do send him on blitz every now and again block shedding could be better so i think that we'll go uh run stopper we'll get him block shed should and that'll put him closer to a scheme fit anyways so looking for a block shed does get him up to 81 overall which is nice and no gains to block shed but plus three to play wreck that's a pretty good one so wow need to take a little breather after that one man oh man one new injury just tell me it's gonna be terry or bart burns I'm sure it's Terry for four weeks. Wow. So definitely went out in the blaze of glory. That much is for sure. Having a very good game. But that one is going to sting. And uh, we'll go ahead and discuss the rivalry game. Micah Parsons. Yeah. he. Uh, should we get ratings boost or staff points? We're going to credit the players. It was tough as a coach to write checks. Only your players can cash. But I had a ton of faith in the team coming into the week. And they delivered in a big way with that performance and we should get uh, plus seven pass block strength and pass block finesse for the next game and all offensive linemen earn 2500 xp now we are going into our bye week next week so i'll go ahead and just uh, i'll do that stuff off camera not really too worried about it and then taking on another division rival philly in week 13 so we remain atop the division eight and three what a season. What a game. Hope you guys are loving this series so far as much as I am playing it. And the Sentinels, we could be doing something great here. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.